In 1981, comedy icon Mel Brooks released his classic movie, History of the World Part One. Now, 42 years after the original, Brooks and a new generation of comedians put in their spin on history with an eight-episode Hulu series titled History of the World Part Two. Here's a clip. And Adolf Hitler not giving the performance he had hoped for tonight. Mm. The master race isn't looking so masterful. Very hard to perform at a high level when you are losing a two-front war. Oh, oh no. You know, it really hurts when you fall on the ice like that. <laughs> Absolutely, Trish. And that's going to wrap it up for Adolf Hitler. Let's go to the floor and see some scores. And we're going to follow him into the Kiss and Cry booth. And here he is with his longtime coach, Joseph Goebbels, and his new bride, Ava Braun. And they are throwing things at him in the audience. Yes. Dead flowers. And he's waiting for the scores. Here they are. Wow. 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 As expected, it's a festival of zeros, except for the French. <laughs> Cut it off right wow. there. Joining wow. us now, two of the show's executive producers, writers and stars, wow. the great Nick Kroll and Ike Barinholtz. Nick also is a director for the series. Guys, we've been waiting all morning for this. It's yeah. so good to see you. Yeah. Finally, we're here. Can we Thank yeah. you for showing a Hitler clip, by the way. Yes. It's always fun to have Hitler yeah. open for you. In the morning. <laughs> most mornings. Yeah. In the morning. <laughs> So, Nick, let's go to the beginning of this and how it came about. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Mel Brooks is a touchstone for so many people, and especially for you guys in comedy, a hero, I know. I'm sure you loved History of the World Part 1. He calls you. Is that the way it happened? It says, let's work together on something? Uh, yeah. He, w I got a call uh, that Mel was interested in doing History of the World Part 2, and, and if I wanted to help make it, and, and I, it was the fastest yes I've ever, besides doing Morning Joe, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Obviously. Good catch. And, um, and so uh, I called uh, Wanda Sykes uh, to produce it with me, and then Ike Barinholtz and his uh, writing partner, Dave Stassen. Unfortunately, Ike and Dave agreed. <laughs> and uh, and so we we did it. And that that clip from history the, from the from our show um, is a callback to the original Hitler on Ice in in the original film that Mel made. And we got to go into the dailies uh, in the archives uh, and and pull. That's the actual clip of him skating. Uh, and then we pulled that moment where he falls and and you know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is historically accurate. That's yeah, what happened. Right. 1936 in. Olympics. He mm -hmm. wiped out on the ice. He did it in the Summer Olympics. He did. <laughs> that <laughs> That's the why problem. they switched it to the Winter Olympics <laughs> yeah. after that. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It all makes sense. Yeah. So, Ike, I have to imagine for you it was a quick yes, too. And also just the fertile ground of, like, which moment in history do you want to take? Which other actors can we pull in to do it? It must have been so fun. Well, as Nick was asking me, in my mind, I was like, I will do a Civil War story. I will play Ulysses S. Grant, who's just trying to get a drink. Uh, but yeah, again, when you're calling someone, you're like, hey, do you want to spend two days with your friends working on a Mel Brooks joint? They could not say yes fast enough. So we just got a list of killers. Uh, Jack Black, Taika Waititi, Zazie Beetz, Dove Cameron. Mm -hmm. You guys love Dove Cameron. You love, <laughs> love her music. Yeah. My yeah. Course. My Dove Mike. Articles. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was just a, a you know, reunion of a bunch of uh, friends of ours. And I'm just going to tell a quick story. Yeah. Our still photographer is this guy named Aaron. And he said to me that he went to go see his doctor. And his doctor is an older man. And his doctor said, what are you working on? He said, History of the World Part Two. And his doctor took his glasses off and kind of sat down and said, when I was a young boy in Iran, a man would come with a suitcase that had VHS tapes in it. Mm. And one of those was History of the World Part One. Mm. And my brothers and I watched it. For years, the man would come back and we said, when is Part Two coming out? <laughs> now we uh, can no, finally say Doing it for him. Or doing mm -hmm. it for him. Try to describe, if you can, the writer's room for this project. Well, it was over Zoom, uh, largely, because we were writing this in the middle of the pandemic. Mostly uh, prisoners. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and we and we we got an incredible group of, of writers to come in and and, and sculpt the show, and, and Mel would participate. The scariest thing is trying to like write material uh, and then present it to Mel because he was involved at every stage of this. Uh, and I we did a read through of a bunch of sketches. And uh, Mel uh, came on and said, I, I, you know, I liked 
the musical numbers, because you can't do a Mel Brooks project without some musical numbers. He said, I like the musical numbers, and I like some of the reads, <laughs> uh, which is very funny. And then, he, and then he said at the end, uh, we're going to get some letters about this, and that's good. Um, now, he's still talking about letters. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, we get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it speaks to a larger thing about what Mel wanted out of the show, which is to continue to be provocative. Uh, Mel Brooks's work is always provocative, but always kind of silly as well, and that was sort of a goal for us, is to try to, you know, make something that was very funny and 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 talking uh, social satire, but never taking itself too seriously. So when you say he, he said letters, that proves that he's actually 98, not 96. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> he did tell us, though, he said, don't be afraid to make dirty jokes. And we really took that to heart. You this really show is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Let's watch another clip here. This is where Nick offers his interpretation of Judas. <laughs> mm. So what'd you think of the show? Eh, never me. Well, Jesus loved it. Please, Jesus loves everything. The guy can't stop saying, oh, I love this. He's just looking for followers. <laughs> Look at Jesus over there. Look at him. Absolutely whooping down that bacon cheeseburger. Oh, it looks so good. Bacon cheeseburger? Hold on. That's not kosher. Wait, none of the food here is kosher. Oh, please, let him sin. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the f***ing phones. Wait a minute, I just ate a bacon wrapped scallop and baby back ribs. You mean to tell me none of this is kosher? You know what? I'm livid. As a Jew, I'm livid. You know what? I'm going to plot. I can understand why you're pissed, because something is going on with this Jesus guy. He's trying to phase out his Judaism. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> J.B. Smoove, Richard Kind, obviously a little nod to Larry David there. Yeah. yeah. Just a small nod. <laughs> a little, a little, a little, a little hat tip. Yeah. A little hat tip. <laughs> Very subtle. Very <laughs> subtle. You'll, you'll, you'll get some letters. Uh, yes. so, so how did the process go to pick which historical figures to be represented? I mean, the, the, Willie mentioned a couple of them. There's Shakespeare. There's Rasputin. There's singing Stalin, mm -hmm. uh, played by Jack Black. Talk to us how that hat came about. Well, you know, uh, Nick and Juan and I each kind of had ideas of who we wanted to do. I wanted to play U.S. Grant. He was one of our hottest presidents. Mm -hmm. We can all agree on that. <laughs> sure. uh, Nick had in his head this character, Schmuck Mudman, and we wanted to do a huge Russian Revolution storyline. And, and Wanda was very adamant. She's like, I want to play Shirley Chisholm. She's uh, inspiring, but also very funny. And then along the way, we would just kind of think of, like, what is a funny situation? Oh, Oh, writer's room with Shakespeare, where he's a nightmare boss. Mm -hmm. Let's get Josh Gad. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it really was just, it lined up with just characters we created and just people that wanted to come and play it. And, and you know, like uh, Taika Waititi plays Freud, and it's his master class. So it's finding the alchemy of what is a funny character and also like a genre that would be interesting to see it in. Um, Kublai Khan and Marco Polo. Uh, and Kublai Khan does a commercial for concestry.com uh, <laughs> because we're all pretty much related to him on some level, yeah, possibly. Some level. Uh, so we really tried to you know, take a historical person or situation and say, how can we make this very stupid? Mm -hmm. And I think most of the time we succeed. We've succeeded. I don't want to give away too much, but one of the great strokes of genius, George Wallace, the great comedian playing. Yes. yes. George Wallace, the governor from Alabama. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was. We we tried to do casting wherever we could. <laughs> See, it's so yeah. good. It works. Yeah. It's it works. so good. And your fans will be happy to know there's a little Gilfizan tucked away in the show. And I'm not going to say anything else. That's yeah, all. That's it. I know the Morning Joe fans are in, the crossover is massive with Gil Faison and Oh Hello. Oh, was that just me? <laughs> you, know, you know what's kind of incredible when you think back to the original, you know, Carl Reiner, Mel Brooks, 2,000-year-old man, mm -hmm. the root of that and what it's grown into stuff like this and more, much more. For sure. I mean, it's a, his influence, Mel and, and Carl, and but Mel's influence on all of us was is huge, and, and it made casting the show a lot easier because we could call up Johnny Knoxville. J Johnny called us and was like, hey, I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan. If you need anything, I was like, great. And we were like, well, then he should be Rasputin because who who yes. else was who tried to kill as people tried to kill as much as Rasputin as Johnny Knoxville. So we did Jack Rasp. Uh, and it's very and so it's filled as much as possible with people like that. Who Sarah Silverman was like, if you need anything at all. So we, we were able to cast the show. If we uh, don't win a Kennedy Center honor for the show, we have fit. <laughs> Just to be clear, you're on your way. You're on, before we let you go, by the way, we have to congratulate this man. Mm -hmm. He is. 
the newly crowned champion of Celebrity Jeopardy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. What Hello. is what? What is? What is? Thank you, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching it all. I said, look at Ike go. This guy's yeah. good. Now you're onto the Tournament of Champions where the stakes only get higher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, if Johnny Gilbert retires, I think he's yeah, got a future right that there. That was my audition tape right there. Nailed it. <laughs> Guys, congrats on this series. It is so funny. The first four episodes of History of the World Part 2 are streaming now on Hulu. Nick Kroll, Ike Barinholtz. Good to see you guys. Thanks, Thanks so you much guys. for having us. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be Thank right you. back with more Morning Joe.